anything that you want to remember, very, very simple formula. One, create pictures in your head, right? So come up with a visualization. And this is the same way that the world record holders do it. Come up with a novel visualization, okay? So your name is Tony. I might picture you as Tony Montana, right? So you've got this big machine gun there. The next thing, which I kind of alluded to there, connection. So connect it to things I already know. I'm creating a visualization to the most familiar Tony that I can think of. And number three is location. So if I'm doing a lot of names or I'm doing sequential data, I want to put it into what's called a memory palace, meaning I take that visualization and I put it in a, a structure, whether it's my house, my office, uh, the city that I live in, and I organize the data in a very specific way. The reason we do that is our brains remember pictures more effectively and remember locations extremely effectively. Yeah. This is a survival technique. And so you'll never forget the layout of your childhood home. You'll probably never forget what was on your nightstand when you were a kid. It's that effective. And so pictures, locations, and connections, that will allow you to remember pretty much anything you need for weeks on end. The second, I guess, second or third tip, depending on how you count, is systematic review right? So it is not enough and you can, you can go up right. to a memory that's champion. A re- that's a key one, isn't it? It really is. I, yeah. And I've asked a ton of memory athletes about this. You know, how long do you remember this stuff? You memorized 38 decks of cards yesterday. How long will you remember it? And they go, oh, three, four days. If I don't review it, then your brain just goes, all right, I don't need it. So you want to review systematically and periodically. If you create these visualizations, they become so vivid that you'll almost never forget. Names particularly, because our brains, names are a very, like names and faces are a very special thing for us, unless you have face blindness, which everyone loves to say, oh, no, 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 I have face blindness. No, you don't. Like it's, it's an infinitesimally small percentage of the population that has this. But for the rest of us, our brains can actually recognize a face and the expression on it in 150 milliseconds. Like there's everything else that we can remember, and then there's locations, names and faces, which are survival advantage, right? You need to know immediately, is this person someone who is going to harm me or not, right? And so, I mean, there's this whole idea of Dunbar's number in sociology that like you can really only maintain active relationships with 50 to 150 people, but you can know tens of thousands of names. And in recently, this is crazy, names and faces. I was watching uh, The Devil Next Door on Netflix And you see these people who were in Treblinka during the Holocaust. And 60 years later, they remember this guy who was there and was the guard. And they're able to point to the picture and be like, that was the guy. And he did this. And he shoved me into this place. And it's like, we really remember faces. And so uh, what you need to do is just create these associations and pictures. You should be able to do it. I think one of the biggest problems with names and faces is people just assume they're not going to remember. So they don't even listen. Yes. So that's really the, the third tip, which should be the first tip, is actually listen. And one trick that I like to teach people to make sure that you actually listen is always repeat the name. Hmm. Don't repeat it seven times. That, that is unnecessary. But just, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. Okay, Tony, nice to meet you. And then if, if you're unclear, because when you do these memory techniques, you will remember. And, and one time I misheard, uh, I heard Karen, but her name was actually Sharon. And hmm. it was like game over. Because for like a year after that, it was, it was Karen. <laughs> so I often check and I'll be like, you said Sharon, you know, or, or ask like, oh, how do you spell that? I repeat the name and make sure yeah, that I heard yeah, it. That's good. It's, it's become a habit for me because it's, it's kind of like, you know, this idea of like pointing and calling in, uh, in Japan, they do this thing on the subway where it's like the person has to point and call. So like, instead of just saying, oh yeah, I open the door or, oh yeah, there's no one stuck in the door. They actually point and go, door is open red light is on and and just that activity of actually saying it out loud and making it a habit has eliminated accidents for the most part. And so it's the same thing. It's like when I meet someone, I shake their hand and I say, nice to meet you X. 